Hi, my name is Mike Gaben, and welcome to Mission 20 of this KSP campaign. Today, Val is off looking to add to the ranks of the Kerbinok Corps. Word has come to the administration of the KSC that two Kerbinots of unknown origin have somehow gotten themselves stuck in orbit and are in need of a rescue. And, of course, once rescued, they will be obligated to join the crew of the astronaut complex. Before looking at the details of the contracts, let's take a quick look at the vehicle. Right now, this thing is being pushed up by six BACC SRVs, a part that you have seen before, but we are reaching a point in our ascent that will feature a brand new part. Those are Separatrons pushing the boosters away from the vehicle and looking great doing so. Each of the boosters carries two separatrons that stage at the same time as the radial decouplers. I usually position the separatrons high up on the boosters, but angle them a bit downwards so they don't induce too much torque. For boosters like the BACCs, I also like to remove a lot of the fuel from the separatrons and turn down the thrust. This saves a bit of weight, and quite frankly, looking at how these things blew off, I could have removed a lot more. Though just a little more than half the mass of the monster Jeb flew last episode, Val will actually be traveling quite a bit further than Jebediah. It's just she isn't hauling an extra four tons of engine like Jeb did. This vehicle is also devoid of any science equipment, shedding even more mass. As a general rule, whatever you save in payload mass, you'll save ten times that in your final vehicle. Also featured is another new part, the FL-T800 fuel tank. This tank is the largest of the 1.25 meter tanks, which means I'm getting close to a final standard lifter design. This will allow me to design a couple of standard 1.25 meter lifters that I can just keep reusing over and over again for my smaller payloads. This will save me time in the VAB. I rather like the look of the triple stack of tanks being pushed up by the three Reliant engines. I would consider this my 1.25 meter heavy lifter. The only part I would still like to add is a set of 1.25 meter reaction wheels, but I've yet to unlock them. I found I had to use the auto strut feature this time around to stiffen up the vehicle. It was a bit wonky where the payload was attached to the lifter, but I found auto strutting the decoupler as well as a couple of parts around it to the heaviest part in the vehicle just stiffened it right up. First contract we'll be going for is the second on the list to rescue Fred Van from an orbit about Kerbin. Unfortunately, Fredvan is in an orbit with an altitude higher than that of the moon. In addition, the orbit is fairly inclined. I'm estimating the inclination to be about 20 degrees. Having launched at the relative descending node, I'm attempting to fly a little over 20 degrees to the south of east. Unfortunately, I went too far south due to some brutal arithmetic. A mistake I spent pretty much this entire ascent trying to correct. The other rescue contract is to get Jerberry from an orbit about the moon, so after rescuing Fred Van, the plan is to shuffle ourselves into a lunar orbit. If you've watched any of my KSP math videos, you likely think that I plan my fuel budgets precisely every time. Well, this time my budget was much more shot from the hip. We'll have to see how this goes. We're coming up to our orbital insertion. If you take a look at my relative inclination with the target orbit, you'll see that I'm just under two degrees off. I mean, it's not bad, but we'll try and pull that closer during our insertion burn. Here we go, and oh yeah, that's coming down nicely. Just pulling that prograde vector to the left there on the nav ball here. Let's throttle up a bit. We're getting a little bit close to our apoapsis there. Oh, we're only about 0.2 off now. Okay, there. Just lock it on prograde. That's good enough. Yes, that's good. Alrighty. Just get our periapsis up to about 50 kilometers still in the atmosphere so that the lifter will deorbit. Unfortunately, I forgot to put any parachutes on that stage. I could have probably recovered it. Oh well. I'll have to remember to do that next time. We've got our LKO. 
and I have adjusted attitude to normal and we'll just select a solar panel here to fine-tune our exposure to the Sun all right let's light her up and set up our burn the closest approach is around 67 kilometers but that's because of the slight inclination difference we'll perform a correction mid-course Note isn't coming up for another 13 minutes, which gives us time to talk about this vehicle. Really gotta shake up these designs. They're all starting to look too much the same. I actually started building this time with the inline cockpit rather than the command capsule just to make this look a bit cooler. But I really like the instrumentation in the command capsule much better. And besides, it's 20 kilograms lighter. 20 kilograms is 20 kilograms, right? No new parts. This thing is being pushed by the ever-reliable LV909 Terrier, definitely one of my favorite orbital engines. Despite no new parts, with over two kilometers per second of Delta V, this is certainly the most versatile vehicle I've built thus far. I'm thinking I'm going to move into permanent space vehicles pretty soon instead of these one-offs. I'll try to give that one a little bit more panache. As mentioned, I didn't do a whole lot of calculating to determine the Delta V I needed. I did work out that the Delta V for this rendezvous should be in around 1200 meters per second. After that, getting a moon capture shouldn't be much as my orbit will be very close to the moon's orbit. It takes about 300 meters per second to get from lunar orbit back to Kerbin, so I figure I got about 600 meters per second for any additional orbital finagling. That will also have plenty of opportunities to, to abort and head back to Kerbin, and we can just get Jerberry some other time. Worst comes to worst, we could always send Jeb to rescue Val, but, well, clearly that will have to be a last resort. Whatever happens, Val will certainly be traveling further than any Kerbal before her. Okay, so after a couple of days journey and the tiniest of correction burns, we are now just 30 minutes from our target. We're still over 600 kilometers away, but our closest approach distance is about 10 kilometers with an encounter speed of 358 meters per second. Let's see if we can not do something about that. Oops, other way. One thing I like about these high altitude rendezvous is that the trajectories out here are relatively straight, unlike low orbit. If the retrograde vector is on the target icon, you're pretty much set. Okay, closest approach is now a little over two kilometers. Let's time warp our way in closer. Oh, better burn time has kicked in, providing us rendezvous information by the nav ball. We can get ourselves out of map view now. I'm a big fan of any mod that keeps you from having to be in map view all the time. Let's really start killing off some of this velocity. Well, relative to the target, that is. I'm actually burning prograde relative to Kerbin, and thus, in a way, really increasing my velocity. Oh, this relative velocity stuff can get confusing. Anyway, while Val continues to maneuver her way in, why don't we check in on our soon-to-be newest recruit? Wow, someone is excited to be stranded 16,000 kilometers away from home. I like the texture, but I believe this is one of the old female textures in the Diverse Heads pack that was designed for the old male models before they added women to the game. Honestly though, I think he looks rather dashing. But as you can see, Val has just about zeroed out our relative velocities. Here are separations under 10 meters, Val is clearly showing off. Now comes the short EVA for Fred Van. Once the mission is complete, I'm just going to delete his capsule. I'm never quite sure what I'm supposed to think is how he got out here in the first place. Notice that the contract is not complete yet. I still have to get him back to Kerbin to complete the contract. Same with Jerberry as well. And speaking of Jerberry, with Fred Van now aboard, it's time to head off to the moon and try and get Jerberry. The 18 degree inclination of our orbit makes this interesting. We'll put the maneuver here on the ascending node for now. There we go. And this should be a pretty tiny burn here. 
Again, using Maneuver Node Evolve from D Magic. Getting more and more used to this thing. Pop this up a little bit and a little bit of retrograde until Periapsis is down there by the moon's orbit. Okay, no encounter yet. A bit lower. Okay, now let's start hopping ahead orbits until we get an encounter. Well, there's our encounter, but we are now 44 days into the future. And we're still coming in from above the plane of the moon, of course. Okay, let's reset the burn and try matching planes with the moon's orbit first. This should be anti-normal. Step up the increment here. Anti-normal, yep, yeah, that's working. Get down where we can see this a little better. Just gonna eyeball this. All right, there, that's the planes match. Now retrograde. Okay, and we should be able to get another, oh, there it is. There's our encounter. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like I'm still in the right plane here. Let's um, like fine tuning this a little bit. Oh no! Oh, there, I just lost it. Oh, let's come back. Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's zoom in on the moon here and see what we got. Uh, okay, so I'm smacking into the moon. Oh, I'm not quite in the equatorial plane of the moon. We can tweak that easy enough. A little bit of normal. There we go. So we're coming in equatorially. It's not like Gerberi's in an equatorial orbit. In fact, yeah, she is in a retrograde orbit here. We're going around. I gotta, I gotta come in on the near side of the moon. Let's see if we can adjust. Ah, stop. There we go. Okay. There. All right. Oh no, I can see my exit up there. I'm coming around the wrong way. Shoot. And after a lot of playing around, I still couldn't get my trajectory to come around the moon in a retrograde direction. Perhaps it has to do with coming in from an altitude that's a little bit higher than the moon, that I can't come on the near side of the moon. But whether I could do it, whether it's possible or not, I don't know. Eventually, I just gave up on the whole adjusting the planes and just flat out performed a 29 meter per second retrograde burn. And I'll worry about adjusting planes once I'm into the moon's sphere of, uh, sphere of influence. That will be easier. I did leave my closest approach to the moon nice and high. Uh, the capture should be pretty cheap. Certainly, the Oberth effect does not come into play here. And a high altitude will make any plane changes I'm going to need to make. Obviously, I will be needing to make plane changes uh, cheaper. Let's hope they're cheap enough. Unfortunately, it is going to be about a month and a half until the burn. I do hope Valentina and Fred Van won't get on each other's nerves too much. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes I can see it in your smile Okay, so that's our moon capture with 712 meters per second left in the vehicle. Let's see what we can do. We'll find Jerberry here and target her. Oh, groovy. <laughs> 97 degree inclination difference. Well, we're coming up on the descending node next, so we'll add a maneuver there. I'll select the ascending node just to keep an eye on the inclination while I put the maneuver in. Jeez, is this normal or anti-normal? Oh, hang on, it's a descending node, so it should be normal. I'll start by bringing down my periapsis to Gerberi's orbit. All right. Now let's start adding normal. Notice as I do this that clicking on the normal button actually affects the prograde too. This is maneuver node evolve, trying to keep my periapsis at roughly the same altitude as I change my inclination. It's 
kind of neat. It certainly reduces the amount of fiddling that's required when performing big plane changes. I played around with the maneuvers a bit, including seeing if it would be cheaper to separate this into two separate burns on two separate orbits. But this turned out to be the best option, just to do it all at once. A 203 meter per second burn, which leaves me with a little over 500 meters per second left in the vehicle. At this point, I could figure out how much the rest of this is going to cost. It's just a straight up home and transfer to match orbits after this. But you know, sometimes you just gotta play. With that done, we'll set up our phasing orbit at periapsis. That's 55 meters per second, and I can see that the relative speed at the encounter is 75 meters per second. Subtracting that off would still leave about 375 meters per second in the vehicle. Val should easily be able to get home on that. Uh, sorry Jeb, it's looking like you're going to be staying on the ground for now. Oh, Jerberry is in a Mark I cockpit. After matching velocities, this time Val had to vacate the command capsule so that Jerberry could get in. It's starting to get a little bit crowded in here. Looks like Jerberry is an engineer. Many of you likely already noticed that Fred Van is a pilot. That'll take some pressure off of Val and Jeb, though another scientist sure would have been nice too. Jerberry also just has the stock female facial texture. I'll have to change that once I'm back in the Space Center. And while I'm at it, I'll break out MS Paint and give my new recruits some custom helmets just like my original four have. Okay, let's get home. Don't forget we're retrograde here. Retrograde orbits are always weird. But about 253 meters per second got my periapsis with Kerbin down to 30 kilometers while within the atmosphere. Man, according to Kerbal Engineer, I still have 123 meters per second left. It's too bad we don't have something else we can do. Val's contacting the KSC, wondering if there's anyone else that could use a rescue. Not that we actually could, as this vehicle's now full. And if you look here, we are actually coming remarkably close to the KSC. That's it just over there. I would love to say I planned this, but that would most certainly be a lie. <laughs> I've never gotten the knack of aiming these return trajectories, nor do I particularly care that much. The only thing I'm a bit concerned with is rolling once we touch down in the highlands that are below us, but I think the reaction wheel should hold us steady. We'll level her up just as we touch the ground and... Touchdown! Oh, science! I can do a surface sample! This is a pretty roundabout journey to get ourselves to the highlands just outside the KSC for... 0.5 science! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, not much science to be had on this mission. And upon recovery, whoa, look at that, 2.9 science. Most of that from just recovering the vehicle after being in orbit around the moon. I, do get, I did get three experience for Val's moon orbit and five experience points for both Fred Van and Jerberry. Got messages here. Rescue Fred Van from orbit of Kerbin. Well done, Fred Van Kerbin has been recovered in one piece and is now enjoying a thorough debriefing from the comfort of his quarantine cell. Oh, this is the same thing for Jerberry. And Jerberry Kerman is now part of the space program crew. Some cash and some reputation. Oh, we got some milestones. We performed a rendezvous maneuver around the moon. Yeah. And we have performed a crew transfer near the moon. Excellent. And then the Fred Van message is okay. And with 59 science, I can't unlock any nodes in the tech tree. I do have a Duna contract that I really want to do, and I thought I could get there on the antennas that I unlocked last episode. But even if I quadrupled my best antenna that I have now, my communication would still be very sketchy. I would love to unlock some better antennas, or I guess I could also upgrade the tracking stations, but I don't have enough funds to do that either. I am happy now having two extra Kerbinauts, but I think my next missions are going to have to be about science and or funds. But you know that's going to have to be for the next episode. 
Until then, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.